Hi, yo, what is poppin' people? It's your boy Gari, back at it with another video. Now, a lot of y'all people been asking me, Hey, yo, Gari, how do you mix your beats? How do you make your beats sound good? How do you make your drums smack? Why do you look like Jack Harlow? Now, I'm just playing about that last one, but stop commenting that I look like Jack Harlow. All right, but we need a beat, so I'm gonna cook a beat up first, and then I'm gonna show you guys how I mix it. So, yeah, let's make a beat. Alright, so we're in FL Studio, I got the beat here, um, and it's not mixed at all. Usually I would level out the drums as I make the beat, but right now I just have everything at the normal volume and no EQs, no effects. Just to show you guys, like, kind of the process. Alright, so the melody is from my new loop kit, it's called Gary's Guitar Collection 1, and uh, there's a lot of, like, guitar loops in there, like, old styles, um, and if you want to check that out, I'm going to have a preview at the end of this video for that kit. So stay tuned for that. But yeah, this is how the melody sounds. And yeah, I pitched it up to semitones, by the way. Alright, so I'm gonna just play it with the drums that I made with uh, no mix. Alright, so the first thing when it comes to getting a good mix is actually having good drum sounds. Uh, all these sounds are from my drum kit, the Essentials drum kit. Um, you can find it on my website. It's going to be linked in the description. Um, but yeah, it's really important to have like good samples because if you don't have good drums, then you're not going to mix your way into making them hard drums. And what I would suggest doing is actually just listen to your favorite beat makers and kind of find how you want to level your sounds as far as the volume goes because people do it very differently like some people have the hi-hats all the way up like this and some people just like it medium and some people have really loud claps or snares or perks and some people like to have them in the background so it's all based on opinion really so you really want to find your own style of actually mixing your drums but a really easy thing to do is try and get your 808 to kind of clip a little bit and then mix your drums around the 808 and the melody so what I would do is I would have my melody and my 808 on and I would push the volume of the 808 until it kind of clips a little bit that way I know like my 808s are gonna hit hard now really quick you also really want to cut out the low ends of your samples so I usually just use the EQ and cut out to where it says bass right here like that's usually what does the trick but use your ear and trust your ears because Sometimes you might not have to cut out anything at all, to be honest, so. But this is good. And this is sounding good, so usually just level your melody after your 808, once you have your 808 kind of clipping, kind of not. Um, and one huge thing is actually using a soft clipper on a master. Now, everyone really does this, but yeah what I usually do too is I actually put the post to 79% that's just because sometimes it will actually peak even though it's even though you have the soft clipper on so but what you also can do is you can also use this plugin right here the TR5 classic clipper now this gives it like a similar effect to the soft clipper but you can push the gain a little bit like like a distorted 808 sound fiddling around with the gain and having the slope all the way down to soft clipping might 
you might find something good. Uh, I'll show you guys like the difference between a soft clipper and a classic clipper. Okay, with the classic clipper. It's a little bit more distorted just because you can push the gain a little bit. I usually like to use the soft clipper, but both works. Now, once you have your soft clipper and EQ'd out your melody and you have your 808 at a nice volume, I would usually bring in like the claps or the perks or the snares depending on what you use. Just getting a good volume, not having it like take over the whole beat, but really having it present in the beat. But you could also just play around with this and find out where you like to have your perk. Now, once you have that, I would usually bring in like the snares. And ideally you want your like offbeat snares to kind of be a little bit lower than the perk or the clap that you're using. Now I have another snare that's kind of offbeat, so I'm gonna level that too. Now once you have that, I would usually bring in like the hi-hat. Now as I said earlier, you could have your hi-hats all the way up. Really making them crispy, but I like having them uh, like at a normal volume, maybe a little bit lower. Now depending on what type of beat you make, you might want to use uh, kicks. I haven't decided yet so I'm gonna listen to it with all the drums and then find out if I want to kick in this or not. Yeah, I actually like how it sounds with the kick. So that's also a good tip. Like some people use kicks every time they make a beat. I really just listen to the beat when I have all the drums done and then I find out if I want to use a kick or not but in this case I really want to so I guess the last part right now would be panning and adding effects like reverbs and stuff I don't really use a lot of effects I would maybe use like effect tricks on my hi-hats to get some cool effects going but I think I'm gonna try and pan my snares so the offbeat snares like a little bit to the right and to the left Yeah, that's basically how I mix my drums. So yeah, that's pretty much how I mix my beats. Um, and to me, this process is all about training your ear and kind of finding out how you want your own beats to sound, but also making them listenable to rappers or people that you send your beats to. So yeah, that's pretty much it for the video. Check out my new loop kits called Gary's Guitar Collection. I'm going to play you guys a preview at the end. And yeah, peace. Thank you.